Welcome back to Close Up. Republicans have choices in the 1st Congressional District as they look to oust Chris Pappas from that seat. One of the candidates running hard to win the CD1 primary is Caroline Levitt, who joins us this morning. Thanks for connecting, Caroline. Thank you for having me, Adam. It's great to be with you again. And again, full disclosure to our viewers, Ms. Levitt worked here at WMUR in a part-time capacity before moving on to the Trump White House. So uh, this is a youthful field running in the GOP race, and you're one of the youngest in your early 20s. I'm sure you've encountered a couple of older voters kind of suspicious about the age thing. By definition, the passion is going to outweigh the life experience at this point. But what's the advantage? Why could that be an asset on Capitol Hill? Absolutely. Well, I certainly believe that my youth is a strength. As you mentioned, I'm 24 years old and when elected, I will be the youngest member ever to be elected to the House of Representatives. And the reason I'm running is for many reasons, of course, to beat Chris Pappas because he's doing a disastrous job, but it is to inspire young people in our country. And particularly, we need to make sure that they believe in conservatism because my generation of voters is overwhelmingly voting Democrat. And so I feel very strongly about reaching out to the dem that Democrat graphic, teaching them that conservatism works, that we need to believe in the American dream, and that we need to get these young people engaged and involved in our campaign. This is about the future. And as Republicans, if we don't change hearts and minds amongst young voters, we're not only going to lose elections, but we're going to lose our country. And I also have some exceptional experience in my young career. As you mentioned, I worked at WMUR TV upon graduating from St. Anselm College, later worked in the Trump White House as an assistant press secretary on the front line in the press office, and then later worked on Capitol Hill for a congresswoman as her communications director. And I was very discouraged to see that Washington, D.C. has become so corrupt with people that have been down there literally twice as long as I have been alive, mooching off of the American taxpayers for their own benefit. So we need young, vibrant voices, a new generation of leadership to go down to D.C. and really shake up the system. The polls say one of your generation's top concerns is climate change. If you're elected, will you be working to protect Seacoast residents from expected sea level rise, or do you think that's not necessarily an issue? It absolutely is. In fact, I live in Hampton, New Hampshire, and I saw the flooding that we experienced just last week with the storm. But where I differ from the majority of my generation on this issue is I don't believe that the federal government is the sole solution to all of our problems. We need to incentivize private public partnerships to tackle all of the issues, whether it's the environment, whether it's any issue relative to our economy. I like to see free market solutions. And so that's what I would champion in Congress on that issue, the issue of our environment in particular. Yes, certainly uh, Route 1A is uh, an arterial economic lifeline for New Hampshire and parts of it could end up underwater um, you know, by the end of this century. Is the answer to uh, essentially keep the same energy profile we have right now and try to adapt or is it time to wean America off of fossil fuels as quickly as practically possible? No, we need to get back. We need to get America back to energy independence. We achieved that under the Trump administration. It was one of the greatest accomplishments of that administration. And on day one of his presidency, Joe Biden, Nancy Pelosi, and Chris Pappas supported it, a war on our American energy sector. We need to end that. The first day of his presidency, he cancels the Keystone Pipeline, ripping away good paying union jobs from hardworking laborers in our country. And we've seen the devastating effects of that already, right? The rising gas prices. I've talked to voters every single day. That's a top concern and issue for them. So I believe in energy independence and I believe in these good paying jobs that produce that energy independence that we so desperately need, especially now as Americans can't even afford to fill up their own gas tanks. Let's talk about immigration. As we both mentioned, you worked in the Trump White House. Was the Trump White House's decision to expand the family separation policy, which did result in a much larger number of moms and kids, sometimes toddlers and babies being separated, was that morally wrong? I believe that if you commit a crime in this country, and that includes coming into this country illegally, you should pay a consequence. And we've seen the devastating ramifications of this administration that has taken the opposite approach. We have seen the largest wave of illegal immigration in our country over the past year. We've had more illegal immigrants from around the world, not just Mexico. These people are coming from our adversary countries, Russia, China, Iran. They're coming here because they know that Joe Biden is going to let them in. And that is unacceptable. So I believe in strong immigration policies. I believe in effective deterrent migration protocols. I am adamantly opposed to amnesty. We need to rebuild our southern border wall. We've already paid for it. And those materials are sitting down there. And it's egregious. If you talk to any Border Patrol agent 
at the southern border, they will tell you that it was clean and it was effective under the Trump administration. And it's an absolute mess. And this border crisis has a direct impact on the people here in our state, especially in terms of the large amounts of illegal drugs that we've seen pour into our country. We had 100,000 fentanyl overdoses in America last year. That's a tragedy that unfortunately no one is talking enough about. And we know, Adam, you and I both know that the opioid epidemic has hit us hard in this state. So those drugs are coming here. They're poisoning our communities. We need strong immigration policies, a strong border. And I will always stand with our men and women of the United States Border Patrol when I get to Congress. Let's set aside the labels though. You know, if you're someone who loves freedom and your family is in mortal danger, and you're in a part of the world where no one's going to do anything to help you except yourself. Isn't the best decision a human being can make to come to the United States? We have a legal immigration process. That's why we have that. So those who are seriously facing persecution and those who want to come to our country, subscribe to our culture, adapt to our American way of life and love our nation, they are welcome here legally. But we have seen an illegal invasion on our southern border under this administration, and it's absolutely unacceptable. And when we take back the House in 2022, I will be one of the first people to introduce legislation to get this under control because it is impacting New Hampshire. So to your point, we believe in legal migration, period. Uh, Caroline, do you believe Social Security should be privatized? I do believe that eventually we are going to need to find solutions to the problem of Social Security. Look, this is a daunting challenge for America. It has been for many, many years. And as a young candidate, I'm particularly interested in this issue because the truth is it's going to be insolvent by the time that I am of a retirement age. I've been paying into the system for 10 years, and that money probably won't be there if we don't find both short-term solutions but also long-term. And the privatization of Social Security, while grandfather in those who have already paid into the system, including myself, I think is a solution that should be looked at very closely. And I would certainly be interested in proposing legislation to do that when I get to Congress. Yeah, on that topic, how do you cover the cost of the transition? Because obviously there are the obligations to pay out and then making that money available. There's going to be a period of time where you need more money than is actually there. So do you raise taxes or do you incur more debt to pay for that? Absolutely. We will never raise taxes when I am elected to Congress. What we can do is slash spending. The federal government has spent more money under this administration than they have in any other administration in United States history. And that's an issue I also want to champion because, again, you opened up this interview about my youth and my generation is going to have to foot the bill for all of these socialist spending sprees in Washington, D.C. right now. There's a lot of money that we can slash, particularly foreign aid. There's many other programs that are based basically just wasteful and our taxpayers are funding all of it. Something interesting I found when I talked to young voters is they actually don't really understand that government spending equals their tax dollars. So as a young candidate, I've been pounding the pavement with that message. There is so much spending in Washington, D.C. that we can slash before looking at Social Security. We perhaps could increase the age to inc to uh, maintain the program, like I said, then later grandfather Americans into it. But there's so much spending that can be undone. This president essentially has put forth social programs that are bankrupting America. All right, Caroline Levitt, we've covered a lot of ground, but time is up. We uh, appreciate your time. We'll see you out there on the campaign trail. Thank you, Adam. And for anyone listening, if you're interested in learning more, please go to my website, carolineforcongress.com. All right. Thanks, Caroline.